Hello Internet, welcome back to another episode of Basel Spot Live. We are here again with the Gravity team and hopefully we'll find some opponents. Um, I've been having a little bit of a little bit of a, a trouble finding an opponent just now, but hopefully this time I'm going to find someone. So um, hello people, hello world, hello Thursday or Friday if you're in Australia. Let's see what we can do. So I suppose uh, generally, oh here we go, fantastic, someone from Spain with a very high rating, much higher than mine. So, I mean, this guy must be top 20 in the world, then, I guess, with that kind of rating. So, let's try and steal some points from them. And this guy has got some... He's got some Dialga. Uh, <laughs> um, like, yesterday, there was two Dialgas in, in, in the team previews, weren't there? So, how do we want to go about this? And again, he's got a Lele and no other terrains. Because, yeah, I mean, this team, this sort of team was not really usable the last two years, I don't think. Just because Coco and Vinny were so common on, like, every team, pretty much. Um, but now I can kind of mess around with, with stuff a bit more. And we have got Lele to try and help with, with that, too. But um, let's let's try and, you know, pick a team here. Like, I've, I've noticed I have a very good habit of just sort of talking about random stuff and not picking my team. So let's pick a team. So Sableye, definitely. Gengar, definitely. Groudon, 100%. Last one. Could be Sceptile. Could be Kiram. But I think it's going to be Sceptile. Again. Sorry, Kiram. You're just not, you're just not doing it for me. Because Sep Sceptile you know, denies Trick Room. Can take advantage of his Psychic Terrain. Um, has got Focus Blast. For the Kartana. Hopefully we get to see that. That'd be nice. Um, I have got Focus Blast on this. Sceptile. Obviously. To, you know. Only really to be used in gravity. Um, to hit Kartana. And I suppose to do. You know. Over 50% to an Incineroar as well. If it's not on Assault Vest. So. Um, we'll see if we get to, to do that. I can't remember if I've played this guy before. In the last couple of weeks. I feel like we probably have. But. Um, he's obviously. You know. Boosted his rating significantly since then because he's uh, got a pretty high rating so let's try and take some of these points try and purloin some of the points okay so now we've got some some tricky business here i've got two plays in mind either i gravity hypnosis into the dialga or i protect gengar and taunt the dialga because, let's have a look at his team again. It does look... I mean, this Kyogre's maybe a slow one. Like, he might want to try and Trick Room here. But if I don't get Gravity up, then... Hmm. I mean, what is the worst case scenario? If I go for a Gravity, worst case scenario is he protects the Dialga and goes for a knockoff into my, say, into my Gengar. I guess that is the worst case scenario. So no Protect, at least. But now we've got the uh, the uh, first turn wake conundrum, haven't we? He's surely going for a knockoff into the Gengar. Like, 100%. Okay, well, alright, well, fair enough. Do that. I just wish that ejected me out. Like, that would be so good if that ejected my, my Sableye out. So now, we do Hypnosis into the Incineroar. And do we either... Switch Sableye into Groudon, or do we taunt the Dialga? That is the conundrum, isn't it? Because Dialga only has got a 1 in 3 chance of waking up this turn. But if it does, if it Trick Rooms, and that is a slow Kyogre, then that's bad, isn't it? But I mean, the Kyogre is really the only thing that I'm worried about in Trick Room, aside from maybe the Amoongus. So I'm going to bring in the Groudon. And go for a hypnosis into the uh, Incineroar here. Best case scenario, the Dialga stays asleep. And I get a very free switch into Groudon here. He's not switching either of his Pokemon because Sableye is the slowest thing on the field. Another shiny Dialga. Yesterday was shiny as well, wasn't it? Hmm. So Dialga, do you wake up? No, okay. So now I'm in the position then where I can basically just go for... I don't think he's got any more Intimidates, has he? No, I can just go for 
a life orb boosted precipice blade, which will knock out the Incineroar, and in combination with a base 130, I like saying this, don't I? A base 130 hex um, should knock out the Dialga. If he swaps Pokemon out um, to try and jiggle things around, then okay, then hmm, we've still got our Sash intact with Gengar. We're still not in a in a bad position, and we have still got Sableye to potentially. Uh, sacrifice off to get the sun back up. So look at that hex, that's lovely damage. And this Kyogre, we'll see if it's a bulky one now, I guess. Or, <laughs> thank you for your points, mister. Or, um, or, okay, so that does look like a bulky one, actually. Or not, so maybe it wasn't a scarfed Kyogre then. I mean, assuming that wasn't my, my disconnect, yeah, that was, that was his disconnect. So, um, thank you. I mean, the game, I suppose at that point was a, a full gun conclusion because if that was a scarf Kyogre, then it shouldn't have had much bulk in it, and a precipice blades would have done maybe um, 75 kind of percent. It only took about you know just over 50 percent from that precipice blades, so um, I'm gonna say that wasn't a scarfed one. So I think I don't know. I mean, he shouldn't have just quit like that because he could bring in the Incineroar. It's asleep, but he does get the Intimidate onto my Groudon, if it's got a 50% berry on it, the Kyogre, then if I go for like a, a Hex, or Sludge Bomb even, and Precipice Blades into the Kyogre, then I could activate the, the berry and it would survive, and the game wasn't completely over. I might have had to, to play a little bit safe there, switching Groudon back into Sableye, uh, potentially sacrificing it, and yeah, getting the sun back up in the future, kind of thing. Um, but I, I, I feel like I, I had won the game from there, so... Um, you know, thank you for, for not wasting our time, I suppose. <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, just, just left us there. And we'll we'll get our points after the last game, um, after the next game goes through. So, he had a high rating as well. So, woo, a guy with an even higher rating. So, this guy is surely top 10 in the world, I'd imagine. Looking at a rating like that. Like, when I looked at the Battlespot ratings a couple of days ago to see whereabouts I was, um, I'm pretty sure top 10 was... You know, just over the 1,800 mark. So, uh, oof, we're, we're playing the, the, the real business now, aren't we? This guy has got a very interesting looking team as well. There's a Greninja. Ooh. There's a Whimsicott, which I hate playing against. And a Tabby Finny as well, which kind of screws up my um, sleep shenanigans, doesn't it? Um, so how do we want to approach this? Let's try and, let's try and think. Greninja is faster than Gengar. Which is maybe an issue. Whimsicott is faster than Gengar as well. I can't see him not bringing the Finny here. Is this a game for Kiram? Probably not. <laughs> Sorry, Kira. Um. Hmm. All right. So I do want Sableye and Gengar. I think I do still want Groudon, because in gravity it will knock out the Ho-Oh. But then, like, Sceptile does look good here. But I think we need the Tapu Lele for the terrain control and to stop things like Taunt from the Whimsicott as well. So we'll go in with these. I mean, if we could win this game as well, then, you know, oh, points. <laughs> but, you know, at the end of the day, it's just points on Battle Spot, isn't it? <laughs> so, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, let's see what happens. He's got an interesting enough team um, for me to think that I could be caught off guard by something. And he has actually led with Greninja. So what kind of Greninja... Like, I've never seen Greninja used this year so far. So what would they have on Greninja? Probably just full special attacker with, like, Grass Knot, you would imagine. Protein, surely. So I'm going to Gravity here. And, oh, if, if Lily were scarfed, then I'd be pretty happy. But, ooh, this is actually pretty tricky. Because he's probably going to double into the Gengar here. But this Greninja is going to be a problem, because if we don't put it to sleep, it can outspeed and potentially one-shot our Groudon. 
and potentially our our Lele if it's got a gunk shot. So we will will hypnosis into Greninja here. So this is maybe the Finny coming in. Yeah, wow, okay, so as simple as that, you know. He he I mean if he did attack into Gengar here, which I can't see why he didn't, then this Greninja is potentially just gonna creep through the, the, the team now and, and win. <laughs> as simple as that. Yeah, just because it does have speed. Um, he is still a dark type, so I can't quash it. Okay, so this turn then he has to target the Gengar with the Greninja. So I will bring in Lele. And do something. Try and protect the Gengar. So what could I have done that turn? I feel like I feel like I did have options. It's just this Greninja is a like a big a big problem. It really is, and this is why I really want my scarf Lele back for stuff like this. Wow, he actually made the call. This Greninja is a dark type. Okay, so yeah, so he has got Proki. Um, I literally could have just gone for Hypnosis into Greninja. He doesn't know how important his Greninja is. So now he will attack the Gengar with the Greninja. You would imagine, wouldn't you? So I'll go for a Moonblast into the Greninja and swap Gengar into Sableye and eject back into Gengar. Yeah, this is the problem because a lot of, like, this team kind of does well because, because I'm relying on Gengar being faster than most things. Hmm, what if it's just going for a Muddy Water? Nah, I'm going to risk Gengar. But now there's something like a Greninja, which has got, you know, ultimate coverage on all my frail Pokemon. I mean, if it's not Focus Sashed, then we're still in a decent position, but, like, it's surely Focus Sashed. Ooh, it's not Focus Sashed. Okay. And he does Moonblast into the Lily. Okay. So we're still, <laughs> still hanging on. But, like, obviously it's looking bad. Um, like, he needs to just save his Ho-Oh. And he's brought his Ho-Oh in. Like, surely you save the Ho-Oh. Because I literally can only touch that with gravity. Has he forgotten about gravity? Yeah, got two turns of gravity left. So I am literally just going to go for a press of blade here. And the Fini has to withdraw into something to... Um, Get his terrain back. So I'm just going to hypnosis into that slot. Unless this is like a scarfed ho -Oh. Was that a scarfed Greninja? Is that why it didn't have the Focus Sash? Maybe it was a scarfed Greninja. Which makes sense with Grass Knot. And he's just let me Precipice Blade. If this knocks out the ho -Oh, Watching with intent. That knocks out the ho -Oh. Okay, and then <laughs> critical hit on the top of Fini, which is nice. So what's his last Pokemon then? Groudon, isn't it? Well, that that was, that was an interesting turn of events. Um, the game isn't over yet, obviously. Um, we've got Lele in the back. Now, we've got Psy Shock instead of Psy Kick, so... We're not going to be hitting Groudon for too much, are we? With Lele, at least. Surely he protects the Groudon here, though. Because if I just double into the Finny, it's gone. If I just double into the Finny and knock it out, then surely my Pokemon can not, you know, finish off the game with just his Groudon. So worst case scenario, 
I double into the Finny, knock it out, assuming it doesn't wake up first turn and protect. Um, he doesn't protect with his Groudon, and... He knocks out my Gengar. So he hasn't tried to protect with the Finny. He didn't protect his Groudon either. So... I'm feeling... Okay, he pressed up his plate, he knocks out Gengar. But... We've seen that our Groudon is faster than his Groudon. So we can just go for a Psy Shock and... Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Just go for a Psy Shock and Fire Punch and finish it off. Although the, the sun has gone down. Oh, we haven't, we haven't got Lele. We haven't got Lele. We haven't got Lele. <laughs> you were probably screaming at me, Barry. Your Lele's gone. But, um, this also means that Presbus Blade is now a single target on his Groudon, so it should knock it out, I think. Um, <laughs> and we can Gravity so that we will definitely hit. Worst case scenario here is it actually was a speed tie, and he wins a speed tie, obviously. Um, but if it is a speed tie, we can't do anything about that. So, we literally just have to go for this. If it's a speed tie, we need to win it. That did a lot of damage to my Groudon. I'm thinking, is that like a banded Groudon on his side? Um, but we're not going to miss a Precipice Blade. No one's, gonna, no one's going to miss a Precipice Blade because we're going to Gravity here. But we can't Quash, obviously, because we're in Psychic Terrain. So whose Groudon goes first? Mine. So, I mean, maybe that wasn't a Speed Tie. Single target. Life Orb. Does knock it out. Points. Points. <laughs> How did I win that game? How on earth did I win that game after the start with the Greninja? Like, he even made the call turn two as well, when I could have just gone for Hypnosis into that slot. <sighs> well, I'll tell you how I won the game. He he didn't respect gravity, I guess. He brought his ho in when he should have brought the, uh, the Groudon in. Like, unless he really thought my Groudon has a rock attack. But yeah, he literally just let his ho go down. He must have just forgotten about gravity. The sneaky gravity taking out the the lovely rainbow birds. So, you know, we've actually taken two wins off of two pretty highly rated people. What is our rating going to be? Like, I'm, I'm excited. Like, this is literally the first time I've, like, <laughs> like, I suppose attempted to, like, ladder up quite high on Battle Spot. Um, and here we go. Someone else from Canada. With a Soul Galeo. Ooh, okay. So... This looks potentially nasty because, as I've learnt, well, it's got two potential wide guarders on there. Solgaleo, potential wide guard. Araquanid, definite wide guard. There's no Finny, there's no Coco, so. No real need for me to take my Lele. And again, I can take advantage of that with Sceptile. Again, I'm not seeing what Kiram does here, especially because of these two potential wide guards. And the Incineroar is not going to take anything from Blizzard. Solgaleo is not going to take anything from Blizzard. Um, with Sceptile, I've still got Focus Blast to hit Katana as well. So, I don't see why I shouldn't just go for Sableye, Gengar. Oops. Um, Groudon and Sceptile again. Seems to be the, the, the magic four, doesn't it? So, let's just take a think about the last, the second to last turn in that last game. Because I went for the, the double into the Finny, thinking that I had Lele in the back, and I could, <laughs> whoops, and I could knock out the Groudon with my Groudon and Tapu Lele. If I'd known I had Sableye in the back, would I have played it any differently? Would I have gone for the Hypnosis into the Groudon? I think I still played it right, because a Presbus Blades and a single target Presbus Blades, I guess, was always going to be close to, to knocking out a Groudon. Unless it was, like, really bulky. But, I don't know. Let's try and focus on this game now. And try and get around, get around these wide guards. Hmm. I'm just hoping this isn't one of those games where I'm thinking, I should have had faint instead of power play. Because, you know, I spent all of last week moaning about the lack of faint, the lack of foul play on my save. Like, ooh, I would have won this game if I had foul play, etc. But, um, yeah, just in case you didn't know what moaning sounded like. And uh, and now I've got Foul Play on Sableye, and I'm not even using it. 
like faint would have been handy in a few games, I'm sure. Um, but whatever. We are going to go for a gravity here. And my worry is he protects his Sol Galeo and it's a Scarf Lele. But there's no way for us to see, you know, with abilities or anything. Um, if we hypnosis into the Lele, because like, I'm, I'm worried about the Trick Room, because he has got a rack winded and everything. Uh, I'm going to go for a hypnosis into the Sol Galeo, though. But, okay. Well, your Lele is taking a guaranteed sleep turn next turn, but he is possibly getting Trick Room up. But if he's not attacking Gengar, then I've still got my Sash, basically. And I can, again, just threaten something to sleep. Oh, it is Trick Room. That's really not what I wanted to see. But now I can foul play. <laughs> I can foul play. <laughs> Do I want to foul play? If it is a weakness policy, does that actually matter? Solgaleo surely attacks into Gengar here. Surely. So I do foul play into the Solgaleo. But I think... I do think the Lele switches here into something like the Araquanid as well. He could just double... Uh, he could just protect the Solgaleo and switch the Lele into Araquinid as, as well, and that is, again, what I'm fearing, but because it has got Trick Room on the Solid layer, maybe he doesn't have Protect on it. Mm, okay, so we'll see if this is a 2 hit KO, actually. I'm, I'm very curious about this, and it is. And it's a Zen Head. Oh, I'd, I'd, I'd be slightly miffed if we were flinched here. So we can't Zen Headbutt anymore. Do we get to Hypnosis, though? We do. Okay. So now Sol Galeo has got a guaranteed sleep turn next turn. But I think... I don't think we have any other choice but to... Hmm. I think we foul play into the Sol Galeo. No, we don't have to this turn, do we? Unless the Lele wakes up and Moonblasts into the Sableye. But if it does that, it's not knocking out my Gengar. So I don't have to foul play the Sol Galeo this turn. But I think I do need to keep Sableye in. So I'm going to go for a foul play into the Lele. And a Sludge Bomb into Lele as well. I know Hex does more. But just if he swaps it into a Raquanid, um, Sludge Bomb will do more damage. And the combination of these two attacks will knock out a Lele. Oh, we woke up. And Moonblasts into the Sableye? Okay. Well, he's lost his Lele then, but I, the reason why I didn't foul play into the Sol Galeo that turn was because I was kind of banking on having my Sableye around. I thought if the Tapu Lele did wake up, he would surely just be um, attacking into, into Gengar. I suppose if I, have Hex, if I did Hex there as well, then, um, then, ooh, this is tricky. Uh, it might not have knocked it out. So I'm going to get my Psychic Seed boost while I can. It is Cartana coming in. How many turns of Trick Room have we got left? This is a tricky position to be in. So two turns of Gravity, two turns of Trick Room. The Sol Galeo has had its guaranteed turn of... of sleep. I think this turn I attack because I've got a better chance of the Sol Galeo staying asleep this turn than next turn, and next turn I protect. So this turn, what do we do? This got ton is an issue, isn't it? This turn we... Just double into the uh, Kartana, I think. I'll try and Focus Blast it, and I'll try and Hypnosis it. So it does wake up as well. Ah. Yeah, I was I was fearing the, the first turn wake. And now we're probably just losing the game here, then. So, goodbye points. Okay. 
goodbye points, not necessarily, just yet. So now Kartana has got a guaranteed sleep turn next turn. And Solgaleo can only Sunsteel Strike. Because it's Zen Headbutt is disabled. So I could protect Gengar here and Precipice Blade. But what's his last Pokemon? Potentially the Kyogre. E. If it's Scarfed, we lose anyway. If it's not Scarfed, maybe we... Sword Stance? Hmm. I'm just thinking, what are the chances of this Kartana being a Focus Sash? Because if I think it's Sashed, then I do want to press this blade here to, to break the Sash, and then I can put it in range of, of Hex next turn. But if I knock the Solgaleo out here, oh yeah, I'm I'm not not sure about this. If I knock the Solgaleo out here, um, if it is Kyogre in the back, he gets a free switch into the Kyogre, and I mean if it's Scarfed, I lose the game either way. But if it's not Scarfed, um, we'll see. Yeah, that's that's a lot of damage on a Kartana. Um, so I'm thinking maybe that is Focus Sash, because you just wouldn't run any bulk on a Focus Sash Katana, would you? I suppose, I suppose Assault Vest Katana aren't really going to be too bulky on the physical side either, are they? So if it's Kyogre, I'm pretty sure we've lost, and it is Kyogre, so... Um, if it's not a Scarfed Kyogre... I mean, if it is Scarf Kyogre, he wins 100%. He just walks about here. If it's not Scarf Kyogre, then I need to hope the Kartana stays asleep as I fire punch it. Or I could try and press this blade. Ooh. Because I will knock it out as well and get vital damage on Kyogre. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll live on the wild side. Let's try and press this blade. But I can only do this um, if I hit a Hypnosis as well. I think. If it's a bulky Kyogre, it will survive a Sludge Bomb and um, Precipice Blades, won't it? So, if it's Scarfed, I lose anyway. If it's not Scarfed, I need to hit the Hypnosis. Ah! <laughs> and he wakes up anyway, too. So, um, the game was over there either way. That's unfortunate, but, uh, you know, we still made a profit points wise in this video, didn't we? Um, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with how this went. Um, you know, whatever. That was an interesting game, though. I mean, I was fearing the Trick Room. I did put the Soul Glaive to sleep straight away. There was no wide guard. Um, but how could things have gone better? What went wrong there? Because I feel like that was a very winnable game. Especially because the Kyger wasn't scarfed at the end there. Hmm. What actually went wrong? So we'll put that to sleep. Oh, the Lele getting a first turn wake uh, and knocking out the Sableye, I suppose, was part of the issue. If I'd just gone for a foul play into the Sol Galeo, then it would have removed it straight away. But the Sol Galeo wasn't really a problem, was it? The Katana, yeah. The Katana woke up first turn. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is, isn't it? That's, that's the nature of teams like this. Um, if we hit the Hypnosis at the end there, and the Katana didn't get a first turn awake, then we, we probably would have won the game, but that's just, that's just it, isn't it? So, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, you know, again, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how, <laughs> how well it's been going so far, um, this week again. Um, and Sceptile's actually been doing some business too, so, you know, good on Sceptile. So, you know, please like and share, do all the other nice things, and I will see you for one more video, um, I think one more video with, with this variant anyway. It depends on if we've got time to change things up or whatnot uh, tomorrow. So we'll, we'll see you then, and um, I'll say goodbye for now. So goodbye.